Good evening, and welcome to worship with the Congregation of the Presbyterian Church in New Brunswick as we begin to celebrate the three great days of salvation, beginning this evening, Thursday night, and then going through Sunday at sunset, three days when Jesus gave us a new covenant and gave his life for us and then rose again. And we remember all of those steps along the way. Tonight we begin with recalling Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Um, we will celebrate um, both washing and the Lord's Supper, trusting in the Holy Spirit to overcome our physical distances. Um, it, you would want to have some warm water in a little bowl or a basin or something and a towel for each person present. Towel like, you know, a little towel like this so that you can participate in the washing. Um, have some bread that you can share and um, cup with juice or wine or water in it to, for dipping at the time of the Lord's Supper. Have those things handy. If there are any children online, they should have a, they should have paper and pencil or crayons handy, and we'll talk about that right before the main scripture lessons and sermon, and what they can do with that. But we begin with everyone singing. Chris will play through the refrain, and then we'll sing it through twice. So Latin English, Latin English. Caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus ibi est. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity, God will dwell with you. Caritas et amor, ubi caritas, Deus ibi est. Live in charity and steadfast love, live in charity, God will dwell with you. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. It was two days before Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and legal experts were trying to think of some trick by which they could get Jesus into their power and have him executed. Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper. While he was eating dinner, a woman came up carrying a bottle of very expensive perfume. Opening the bottle, she poured it on his head. Some of those present were highly indignant and muttered, what is the point of such wicked waste of perfume? It could have been sold for over 30 pounds and the money could have been given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has just done a beautiful thing for me. You always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do something good for them. But you won't always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. And you can be sure that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, what she just did is going to be talked about admiring, admiringly. Then Jesus, then Judas Iscariot, excuse me, then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to be, betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were delighted and promised to give him money. So he started looking for an opportunity to betray him. Beloved in Christ, may God's amazing grace be with you. May God's robust peace be yours. 
beloved people of God. This is the night when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the night when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the night when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Let us pray together. O oh God, whose love is embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed his disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal, wash us from the stain of sin so that in the hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Chris will play the hymn and then we will all sing. showed us the way to live in peace when God spoke all these words, saying, I am the one who is and ever shall be, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall, not, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves any graven image. You shall not take the name of the Creator, your God, in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet anything that is your neighbor's. 
Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, we propose to celebrate together with the gracious help of God the sacrament of our Lord's Supper tonight. Our conscience, instructed by God's law, rightly declares us unworthy of this gift. We find that we have neither loved the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. To examine our lives is to confirm that we deserve exclusion from this royal banquet and indeed from God's presence forevermore. Yet this is God's feast of love, and it was in love that Christ gave himself for us. When we were unworthy, Christ made us worthy. When we should have justly died as punishment for our sins, Christ freely paid our penalty, dying in our place. Christ has become our complete righteousness. Therefore, our self-examination must not end in despair. We are called to trust God's work on our behalf and to receive the gift of forgiveness offered us in Christ Jesus. Our reconciliation to God is found in trusting this good news, that before we chose God, God chose us. We are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Partaking at the Lord's table is not an act of virtue. This table is prepared for those who humbly trust Christ alone and find in his death, resurrection, and ascension their only peace. Though they often fail in their efforts, those who thus approach this table will desire to please God, conforming their lives to God's purposes. Rest fully assured that when God finds such contrite trust and godly intention, God will forgive all our sins and make us worthy partakers of this heavenly kingdom. As we examine ourselves, let us confess our sins. Let us remember that genuine repentance involves two things, the dying away of the old self and the coming to life of the new. The dying away of the old self is to be genuinely sorry for sin, to hate it more and more and to run away from it. The coming to life of the new self is wholehearted joy in God through Christ and a delight to do every kind of good as God wants us to. Together as Christ's body, we now confess our sin and express our longing to live in joyful obedience to God. Let us pray. As those who have been touched by your Son, as those who have been awakened by your Spirit, as those who have come together out of conviction, and yet as those who, despite our spiritual pedigree, are empty vessels waiting to be filled. Familiarity with the gospel has desensitized us to its demanding truth, where our relationship with Christ has become more nostalgic than dynamic, where we have lost our first love and have become lukewarm.
where we have regarded mission as what we do rather than what Christ does, where we have regarded mission as the prerogative of the strong rather than the gift of the weak, where our hearts have been quick to give, our hands have been quick to give, but our hearts reluctant to receive. On us, in us, through us, around us, before us, and if need be, despite us. words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Remember these things, O Jacob. Take it seriously, Israel, that you are my servant. I made you, shaped you. You're my servant. O Israel, I'll never forget you. God has wiped the slate of our wrongdoings. There is nothing left of our sins. Come back to me, says God. Come back. I've redeemed you. Believe this good news and live in peace. Remember how Jesus got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. Christ has set the example, and we should do for each other exactly what he has done for us. Chris is going to play through the hymn in a moment, and while we sing, I invite you to wash one another's hands. Us all 
as love grows to fact. Wash our feet tonight, send us out to meet those whose walk means pain and grieving, so with caring and believing we might share you Christ, as we wash their feet. Servants are not greater than their master, and messengers are not greater than the one who sent them. We know these things, and God will bless us if we do them. Hey, if there are any young children present, or if you just think of yourself as young at heart and a child of God, I'd like to talk to you for a moment before we start by our Bible stories and sermon. We've already really started the Bible story already at the beginning, but a little bit more Bible story. Tonight we call Maundy Thursday, and Maundy is a funny word. It's a it's sort of a corruption of a Latin word, which was mandatum. And mandatum means mandate or command, because Jesus gives us a new command at the, on this night. The command to break bread and share it, to share the cup with one another, and in doing so, to share him. And also the command for us to love one another, because you can't share Christ without loving one another. So the next part of the story from Mark that we're going to hear is the part where they get ready and they do that. And even while Jesus is loving them, even while he is sharing himself with them, he's going to tell his friends that one of them is going to betray him. Now his friend probably thinks, oh, I had this handled. Judas probably thinks I do, I'm doing all this and nobody knows. Because if somebody knew, they'd try to stop me. But Jesus knows. And Jesus says, don't worry about it. Go ahead and do what you have to do. And so he does. So we'll remember that part of the story. And we'll remember Jesus saying to, then to his friends, here, here is the bread. And this bread is me. This is my body. Here is the cup. This cup is my blood. Now, ever since Jesus said those things, people in churches, smart people who study a lot, have been trying to figure out what he meant. Did he mean that this literally was his body? Because it doesn't look like it's an arm or a leg or, you know, anything like that. Did he mean that he really bled into the cup? That's kind of gross. Yuck. Or was it a symbol? It's just symbolic. We don't have to worry about anything. I can tell you that in the languages that the scriptures are written down in, this is not the words for being symbol symbolic. And yet the disciples could see that it wasn't his literal hand or foot or anything. And so we believe that the Holy Spirit does something when we share the bread and we share the cup. And the Holy Spirit makes it so that Jesus is present in that bread and cup. And Jesus becomes a little bit part of us. And we are all sharing with him. And because we are all sharing with him, we are sharing with everyone who's ever shared the Lord's Supper. Your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-great-grandparents, the disciples in the upper room and everybody who ever will, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren, and everybody until we all get to God's new creation and the feast that God promises us. All of that is happening all at once when we share around this table. And so that kind of brings us to this thing that Paul writes to the Corinthians, people who lived in a place called Corinth. And he wrote about... He wrote about how they were celebrating the supper, and it wasn't really a very good way because people would get there. The rich people got there first because they didn't have to stay at work so long. They could, they could knock off early. 
and the poor, and they didn't have to clean up at work. The poor people had to do that. And they, of course, the rich people had more food. So they'd get there first, they'd be eating all the food so that there was hardly anything left for the poor people. And that wasn't fair. And they wouldn't talk to the poor people. They'd talk to them, they, each other, and other people would talk to each other. And Paul says, no, that's not how it should be. Because we're all sharing in Christ. And Christ did this out of love. So if we're not doing this out of love, we've missed the point. So listen to that. And think about how it is that we can love each other and share with each other in Christ's name. Okay? Now, before we say we read Bible stories in church, we always say a prayer, and at the end of the prayer, we always say amen. So, the grown ups are going to help me with the prayer, and I'd like you to say amen as loud as you can when we get there. Let's pray. Oh God, we come to you as strangers, pilgrims in this world seeking a new home. We walk by faith, not by sight. We know you prepare a place for us. Open us to your word today. Help us find the way home. And we all say, Amen. Now, listen for a word from God in this story from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It's right where we left off from before. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He directed two of his disciples, go into the city. A man carrying a water jug will meet you, follow him. Ask the owner of whichever house he enters. The teacher wants to know, where is my guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you an, a large room upstairs already furnished. Prepare for us there. The disciples left, came to the city, found everything just as he had told them, and prepared for the Passover. That evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. And while they were sitting there right in the middle of the meal, Jesus remarked, believe me, one of you is going to betray me, someone who is now having his supper with me. Stunned, they started asking one after the other, it isn't me, is it? He said, it's one of the 12, one who eats with me out of the same bowl. The son of man will follow the road foretold by the scriptures, but alas for that person through whom he is betrayed. It would be better for that person if that person had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said, this is my blood, God's new covenant poured out for many people. I'll not be drinking wine again until the new day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This story from Mark is all about changing the rules by which everyone has been playing. From the woman blessing Jesus with perfume instead of him blessing her and others, through the act of betrayal, with a friend becoming an enemy, everything we understand, everything they understood about mortals relating to the divine, relating to God, was changing. And then we have the bread and the cup. The Son of God taken, blessed, broken, and given to us. God incarnate has become the Passover lamb. All our stories about great heroes, children of gods like Hercules and Wonder Woman, visitors from other worlds like Superman with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. All of those stories have the heroes save the day with greater and greater feats of strength. Jesus plans to save the day 
by becoming powerless. And all of us who believe, who believe no longer kneel in prayer before God, but hold hands after this supper in prayer with God, not looking up to a throne, but looking eye to eye as family do around a table where God meets us. Christ gives us a new way to relate. The rules have changed. Unfortunately, we often have trouble catching on. Listen for a word from God in this portion of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Regarding this next item, I'm not at all pleased, for it seems that your meetings together do you more harm than good. First, when you meet for worship, I hear that you split up into small groups, and I think there must be truth in what I hear, for there must be cliques among you, or your choices of favorite leaders would not be so conspicuous. And then I find that you bring your divisions to worship. You come together, and instead of eating the Lord's Supper, each of you goes ahead and eats a private meal. One person goes hungry while another is drunk. Haven't you houses of your own to have your meals in? Or are you making a convenience of the church of God and causing acute embarrassment to those who have no other home? Am I to commend this sort of conduct? Most certainly not. I received my instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you. Our Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is being broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup, saying, This cup is the new agreement in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. This can only mean that whenever you eat this bread or drink of this cup, you are proclaiming that the Lord has died for you, and you will do that until he comes again. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Christ gives us a new way to relate. What we often don't realize, what the Corinthians certainly didn't realize, is that changing our relationship with God changes how we relate to one another. When we share in Christ's body and blood, Christ becomes part of us. When we all gather around the same table, we may bicker, we may get noisy and messy, but we are all in it together. And we are remembering Jesus. And the Greek word for that, by the way, Anamnesis literally means not remembering in your head, oh yeah, like, you know, I remember that really great day when we watched that program. But it literally means remembering, making him present again, bringing him back together. When we are all present with Jesus, we are all present with each other, everyone from everywhere, as I was telling the children. When we're all proclaiming Christ's death until he comes, we're all called to live out his boundless love, called to bring salvation as he did by surrendering our power. Christ gives us a new relationship with God, with one another, and with all the world, living as the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Chris is going to play through the hymn and then we will all sing the psalm actually.
what shall I render to the Lord? What shall my offering be for all the gracious benefits God has bestowed on me? Salvation's cup my soul shall take While to my God I pray And with God's people I will meet My thankful vows to Not lightly do you, God, permit your chosen saints to die. From death you have delivered me, your servant God am I. for the Lord's Supper, I remind you just of a few things. Um, tomorrow, starting at noon, our Good Friday service will be available online. You can watch it whenever you're ready. It took about just about 50 minutes, so when you have about 50 minutes, a little less than an hour, go ahead and watch. Um, the link is there. The link is also available on our Facebook page, and it was sent out to folks in email, so if you're on the email list. You've gotten an email, in fact, two of them this week, talking about that. If you can't find it, quick shoot me an email tomorrow or give me a call and I'll make sure you can get to the link. Um, on Sunday morning, we begin early in the morning because we have a chance to have Easter morning worship live, outdoors with masks on, distanced, but still real live people in worship with us in the Peace Park in New Brunswick. It's a Tabernacle Way and a Beale Street. If you put Peace Park in New Brunswick in your Google Maps, it'll show you the way. Um, and it's not, not hard to find. Um, like I said, please wear masks. It will be a short, short celebration for the beginning of Easter Day. We'll sing a couple of hymns, say a couple of prayers, share the Easter story. That's about all we're going to do. But I hope you can. I hope that many of you can be there. And the really good news is that while they were say it, talking about rain, more and more they're talking about Sunday is going to be a nice morning. So there we go. And it's not even going to be really cold. We have that tomorrow. Tomorrow, stay in bed, stay warm. Sunday, you can do it. If in case you don't get up that early, or in case you could just want to be with your church family anyway, at 9:30 we will have our Easter worship celebration via Zoom, the way we've been celebrating since the beginning of COVID. Um, we will share the Lord's Supper because it's the beginning of Easter and the beginning of the month. Um, and we'll have a little digital fellowship time after. You'll want to be sure you have your bread and cracker and things like that. So there are all of those things. Remember about your offerings um, and get them sent in. Also remember about one great hour of sharing and get gifts for that sent in um, as we get ready to fight hunger and poverty around the world with the rest of our sisters and brothers in the Presbyterian Church USA. Chris is going to play for a moment and then we will celebrate the supper.
be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right, our duty and delight, always to thank you and praise you, almighty God. By your word, you created all things. The earth that nurtures grains and vines, the sun and wind that firm and ripen the grapes, the mysteries of life we cannot see that raise the bread and ferment the wine. By your word made flesh, you became one with us, sharing our senses and your table, sharing our hopes and our dreams, sharing our joys and your grace, sharing our sorrows and your unending love. For all the ways you provide and care for us, for the gifts of salvation and love, we give you our thanks and praise. Tonight, we gather around this table to remember the once for all and perfect sacrifice Christ offered for the sin of the whole world. But as Christ promised, we not only recall, we bring our Savior among us and put ourselves in that upper room, sharing as he is taken, blessed, broken, and given for us. We do this knowing the joy of his resurrection, expecting him to come again, proclaiming the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, and Christ is rose, and Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray. Make this bread and cup the communion of Christ's body and blood for us. Make us one with all your saints, gathered together around your table, working to build your holy kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Our Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Go ahead and share where you are. After we say this prayer, I will read one last short passage from Mark, just a few verses, and then we will sing a hymn. And at the end of the hymn, I'm going to take away the decorations from the elements and things from the table, the palm branches from behind me, and then put a shroud over the cross as we prepare for the solemnity of Good Friday. So be prepared to keep a little bit of silence right there, and then we'll have a blessing and then we'll depart in silence. Let us pray. Around this table, O God, we have recalled your Son among us. Around this table, O Christ, we have shared in your life. Around this table, O Spirit, we feel you moving us beyond death to new life. As we have recalled Christ among us, as we are the body of Christ here and now, so we must follow where he leads. Help us dare to walk with our Savior, facing the unknown so that we may grow, taking up our crosses, giving ourselves for others, facing death so that we may rise to life in you. Let this be the first night of a new life for us, a life, a life free from sin and death, a life of loving and serving one another, a life of abundance with grace for all. Listen for a word from God. They sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus told them, Every one of you will lose your faith in me. As the scripture says, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter blurted out, Even if everyone should lose faith, I never will. Jesus said, Don't be so sure. Tonight, this very night, in fact, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I'll never deny you. All the others said the same thing. Chris will play through the hymn and then we will all sing. Thank you. 
my foes derided by your own rejected, almost afflicted. Who was the guilty who brought this upon you? Alas, my treason, Jesus has undone you. T'was I, Lord Jesus, I, it was denied you. I crucified you. the good shepherd for the sheep is offered the slave has sinned and the son has suffered for our atonement while we nothing God interceded for me, kind Jesus, was your incarnation, your mortal sorrow, and your life's oblation, your death of anguish and your bitter passion for my salvation. Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay you, I do adore you and will ever pray you. Think on your pity and your love unserving, not my dear.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen.